Hey, everyone, and welcome to the HR Vision podcast. I'm your host, Ivo, and every week I'm going to have a conversation that matters about HR. So for the second episode of the season, I have with me a very special guest. They are all special, but this one has been with us for some time. I have with me Geert Hansen. Welcome, Geert. How are you? Yeah, thank you, Ivo. I'm fine today. Good, good. Geert is a senior consultant at Vision, and if not the, he's certainly one of the most experienced members of our team. He's been with Vision for 11 years, and I'm sure uh, he has a lot of stories over the years. Is that true, Geert? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> that's a, an understatement, I think, Ivo. So, uh, yeah, there are a lot of stories that I can tell and that we can drown in. But, um, yeah, of course, I started uh, indeed 11 years ago now uh, and um, was the first official employee of the company. And then I saw everything grow. And it was, yeah, it was really a roller coaster of all things. And each year we had different topics. We had different challenges. That was yeah, very nice to be, to join that and to see that happen. So that's, that's, uh, that was a big adventure, of course. Yeah, this, this, this is already promising. I think it should be fun. But let's, let's start then from, from the beginning, from yourself, uh, Give us a bit of, of an introduction about you, where do you come from, you know, what, what was your experience until you joined for Vision? Yeah. Now, really, um, I, I, from the background, I have a military background. I also worked in logistics. I was a logistics manager. Uh, just to give you a, a, a high over what my experience is. Mm -hmm. And from the logistics part, I get in contact with ERP systems. And right. I find that very interesting. So I did some logistical uh, logistics uh, implementations with the ERP systems. And, um, and after that, I moved from the logistics into IT. So I uh, joined the company that uh, I was working with to implement uh, logistics systems in our, at our company at that time. And then I was joining that partner to move into the world of Microsoft and working actually with the products. And there right. I was, uh, so there I had my experience with uh, more the logistics, some financial parts of that, because those, those are working close together as well. So that is where um, I think now almost 15 years ago, uh, the historic, uh, the history of my uh, experience in uh, Microsoft world uh, started uh, around uh, 15 years ago. All right. So, uh, so HR was never like a, a big focus of your of your life or like your career path was never like it was more on the tech side. You got fascinated by the ERP and those kind of things uh, yeah. and then just slowly moved to 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 for vision to to an HR tech side. Right. Yeah. I was a manager in logistics as well. And as a manager, of course, I uh, was a manager from, uh, let's say, uh, 50 to 150 employees. Mm -hmm. So then also, and that was also for me very interesting to see, okay, how was that HR doing, right? How could yeah. that support the people that are working in logistics and in the warehouses, how they can, how, how we can get more out of them. Uh, that, that's also something, uh, because those are... Uh, um, Value, that's this value for your company. So that's also what I recognized and uh, that people can easily leave the company, et cetera. So you should focus on that HR part as well. So it was also always fascinating for me to see uh, and, and to support that from an HR perspective to yeah. try and get people in and let them stay in the company and try to Yeah, improve them and and develop. Let them uh, let the people develop uh, in, in that logistics uh, part. So there was always a connection with HR, of course. And then I had the opportunity, and I was co contacted uh, by a recruitment company to see if I was interested, not only working with a with a partner that is doing logistics, that was doing finance in the food branch. So then. Uh, I was asked to uh, to to see if it's uh, feasible for me and if it's nice to go to provision. And that was a complete okay. other world. But what I found attractive, it was a complete other discipline. And it was focusing on one specific discipline. I worked in several things, logistics, and then I had some uh, area and activities on the finance part. 
But when you have one module, and of course that module is talking to other uh, uh, modules as well, and you should be interfacing to some of them. Mm-hmm. But what I found interesting is to focus on that just that one specific area and try to specialize in that. And still, as of today, or as today, I keep learning, and our spectrum of products, uh, they are growing, they have changed during time. So yeah. it's always challenging to to work in that only specific part, like HR, with all uh, with a timesheet plus uh, product that we had uh, on the side, and then things changed in the Microsoft platform, and now we are working more on the web apps. Uh, that yeah. is part of a bigger spectrum of the HR world that we are creating, for example. Did you no. did you have that expectation about HR? What was your expectation about HR? Because the feeling that I have is for a lot of people when they start in this, they thought it was like it's a small part of the business. You know, it's, it's probably not that complex, but it is, right? Yeah, I can remember we had a we had a uh, uh, we had some partners where Bert and Peter were trying to get connected to in the company, and we were trying to get HR more higher in the in the tree, as I would call it, to yeah. see. Eh? But it was very difficult to to get acknowledgement from the partners at that time yeah. within the Microsoft uh, world to get involved in HR. Eh? P- uh, Bert was specifically on sales. He was trying to get uh, into those companies, eh? uh, into those partners to see if they could give us a business and we could mean something for each other. And in the beginning years, it was a very hard, uh, a tough cookie to crack. And after a while, we saw that changing. And those partners that were keeping some distance to HR, no, it will never be something uh, important. And now we see the same partners that we talked with uh, 10 years ago are now also focusing on that HR. But I think that D365 Human Resources uh, application, uh, it also launched it more, uh, launched it, and it made it more specific and more special to prove for Microsoft that they were investing in that uh, specific part. So I think also, and the companies, of course, the, 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 the organizations worldwide, they are also acknowledging, okay, the people that we have is our, is our value. And yeah. that should be, yeah, th- that should be supported and, and give more attention than it was 10, 15 years ago. We saw that all change eh, in all the, the HR uh, specific uh, papers and 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 uh, newsletters, etc. It was all very generic, but now you see on on development, on uh, succession planning, uh, with all kind of uh, things on that. It's much more important, and we saw that uh, together in, in at for Vision. We saw that changing from yeah, not very important, I think, to a very important topic of uh, using that ERP in full in combination now with web apps and also a lot of companies as an ISV were also diving into that gap to see and to enrich that more so that everything in a wider perspective can support a company in full and an organization in full worldwide eh, with um, um, with multiple sites and uh, being there in the global in global organizations I think it's very useful to to have these kind of uh, support and the things where we are busy with uh, until now. Interesting. Uh, yeah, it, it, we've seen some some of that before we talk to other people saying that that shifts right between HR, administrative HR and more strategic that companies are valuing that more. Do you remember, do you have any remembers of like 11 years ago when you joined the company, what, what were customers interested of? In, in 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 the tool, if they were at all, or if if we, you were hearing some kind of uh, tough comments about HR, like yeah, we're just doing this because the company wants to do this. Not uh, do you remember any funny stories from those times? Um, I remember the first customers where I uh, where I was working. We worked on uh, on leave. Uh, on the leave functionality. Right? Yes. So that's where it started. Uh, some topics were taken out of that and a leave was one of them because that was indeed 
Indeed, I think the the topic that is uh, that was 10, 15 years ago is the, the most important one, right? Yeah. To have some leave entitlement, not having that cafeteria with all kind of uh, of uh, um, the things that you could organize and uh, yeah. and were provided to the employees. So leave was at that point, I think, a basic thing that people uh, did start to try and automate that more than only having an Excel sheet. That was at that time, I think, the change. Leaving those Excel sheets and having it all registered all over the organization, moving into one big uh, integrated system uh, with ERP. I also saw at that time in the beginning that I started that we were in, in uh, at, at the company uh, at the organizations within the education that we saw that they were using let's say 80 applications from Excel to all kind of other topics wow. and the number was given by the organization and to to keep a hold of all the things related to employees and everything what was happening in the organization so that was a huge thing that I thought indeed, okay, yeah, what is the world where we are now in and how is that going to look like and what can we do as an organization to, yeah. to improve that and to get that more integrated because everything what your human resources are doing are impacting, of course, value in your organization. Are Yeah, so, so that's all very important, I think, to 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 maintain uh, all the employee data for projects or for leave or for salary um, um, compensation and benefits. What uh, what should be applicable for? And I saw, and that was in the beginning. So it was a transformation. What I saw in the beginning from Excel sheets to the proper leave functionality, yeah. where all kind of things uh, could be added to the to the functionality to to take into account for your calculations, to what we where we are now with a lot of dimensions and with a lot of interesting things happening on each and every uh, functionality in the in the, in the HR world. I think yeah, uh, yeah. from leave to to. Uh, payroll, because payroll, that was also a very huge change. And from the start, we had our leave functionality and also we had our payroll where we uh, defined an interface that is communicating within the registration, within the, uh, the, the system where all the employee data is in to export that and to interface that to a proper local payroll system yeah. that was also eh, so that leave in combination with the payroll in the beginning those were our topics our major functionalities where we started with and with which we ex expanded and now we have a broader thing let's say all the disciplines in hr are covered at the moment in our uh, in our complete solution all right um i'm curious you know for all of you know, within all these years, you've seen a lot of customers. Of course, you, you are a senior uh, uh, consultant at the company. You've been in contact with customers more in the support side, I believe. And and do, do you think all those changes, all these transformations over the years, um, they came, do you think it was a mix of a push between what we were doing and what the customers were needing? It was also like, the new the new things that the work life you know needed the more digitalization so they needed to have a centralized database where do you think that transformation came from it was gradual i believe but do you think we pushed it as well do you think like the customer needs also evolved through the years that you, we needed to support with more what is your feeling about that um yeah i think that that is already existing from of course uh, starting with uh, with 80 applications to to one, and then of course data that is involved is going is bigger and bigger, and the management of all that data uh, with all the functionalities. And what we saw was uh, we did not have that cafeteria, let's say 10, 15 years ago. It it maybe a little bit started already. So the bigger companies maybe they already already had something for that. Yeah, but. 
Um, but I think 10, 15 years ago, it was starting to get more important. And I think it's a combination of uh, it's push and pull, right? It, it's yes. having the requirements from the customers and they have all kind of demands of how the system should act. And you sometimes see that they are uh, over demanding, uh, that, that you are uh, have the requirements and you want to have it as perfect as possible. Yeah. And that is also taking care of uh, an extra dimension to to manage that all with within the database structure, of course, that you have within that bigger picture. Yeah. And it's yeah, it's it's that push and pull, right? Because it's it's a combination of of course, uh, and also now uh, your artificial intelligence that is coming up uh, uh, is also having impact on that complete uh, uh, world. So it's a combination of requirements and, of course, the technology that is constantly going to a higher level, yeah. which also take care of maintaining more data, more complex, complex things. So and I also see it changing because in the beginning when we worked, it was all and uh, you worked with HR people. And that was very challenging because they were not experienced in in systems. Uh, they had a, they they know uh, some kind of things in their previous systems and in the current systems. And they said, okay, I should do it like that. But then, when you come in with a new system and you bring a complete new world for those people, yeah, uh, that is very. I saw that also. It was very um, what do you call it threatening for them. Yeah, for some people. And that, and then I saw, okay, um, it's important also, and now we see that more and more, we are now involved with, 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 um, IT? with, comp- with, with, I glo- yeah, with IT and also global companies, which are much bigger, having more employees. And then you see that the organizations are also better organized with uh, application manager, managers that are taking care for the technical part. Because yeah. that was also something. I saw that also change. So that only HR people were there. But then year after year, the organizations were enriching also with technical teams. Eh? And then, of course, they need to have some ISVs or, or suppliers to give them some uh, additional applications. But then we saw that more and more the organizations are taking care for some support, some help desk, some technical uh, support on that as well for HR eh, also because HR in the beginning it was not that important it was your core business of course that was very important and it is very important but now you see that 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 has been changed the last uh, 10 years I think more and more and the world and is is keeps changing on that uh, part as well I think definitely definitely all right so um, sort of a general question based on your experience, of course, but, uh, you know, what, uh, yeah, my question is what it, what it is like to be a, a consultant in, uh, in HR tech, you know, what, what do you think it's the things you must ha- have to be successful in this, uh, in this, in this area? Mm. Yeah, I think, uh, the must have is, uh, to keep being challenged and, uh, get, because when you are focused and you have your products and you don't do anything else for improvement or anything else, then it starts to get boring pretty quickly. And I think okay. what's needed is to keep aligned with the latest technology. And we at For Vision are doing a great job on that. And to keep on top of the new technologies, I think, that are coming around us. And that th- sometimes can be challenging. And when you're close to that technology, but it's giving you the challenge and it's also giving us with the complete company also the knowledge and the experience that brought us where we are now eh, compared to 10 years ago. Yeah. I think that also for me as a consultant, when the product is there, I also saw uh, companies, the product is there, we don't do any changes, it's pretty static. Yeah, I, I think does. that's killing. That That's killing, I think. So... As a consultant in general, and I think when you talk and you already talked with a lot of consultants, of course, in, in the company, that I think is uh, will be a common uh, answer, I think, to, to have that and to follow up on that and to, to get those challenges in and keep improving the HR functionality. So you need to have that, that challenge in, as a consultant. Eh? 
And it's also that, each customer yeah. has his own dimension. Eh? That was Bert was calling that sometime, that each customer has their own dimension. And I think we are pretty good in looking to that dimension and trying to make them a happy customer and try to make them and give them the platform that they need with all the, the, the technical challenges. And I think that is something that I need and that's my food <laughs> for moving forward and, and, and growing for myself, growing for the company, for my colleagues, and of course, for the, the customers as well. Yeah, because I think despite the solutions, they, they came out they come out of the box with certain functionalities. We can add functionality with other web apps, but every customer seems to present a different challenge every time, right? That uh, yeah. that there is something else that we need to develop, that we need to fix, that we need to solve. Um and that makes it challenging, right? That makes it very challenging. And you see it all the time happen. Most of the customers, they say, okay, yeah, we want the standard solution. We don't want any customization or changes. And then you will see during time that that always is, uh, yeah, always is the case because each company think they, they, they always think, and I think it is the situation that they always have that 20% that's different from other companies and yeah. they should take care that that 20% that's different from all other companies, that that should be taken care of for 100%. And that is also challenging because yeah, you can never reach that 100%, I think. And that is, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. For, I uh, think, I think, yeah, sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, I, no, I was no. just thinking of, of this idea that uh, companies a lot of times, and uh, I, I've read this before, but companies a lot of times, they are referenced to as a living organism, right? It's, it, and yeah. every living organism is different. Uh, in a company, every company has their own culture, their own way of doing business, their own types of people, um, positions within the company and all that. And, you know, getting yeah. to a place where you have a system, an HR system that is closed, and you put it in there and it's going to work, it's very hard to do. And I think it's probably hard to do for other applications, but you know, you need to adapt to the needs because it is a living, kind of a living organism. Would you yeah. agree? Yeah, indeed, that, that, that is alive. And people trying to, um, yeah, trying to deliver as well, of course, on the organization from project management level, from key user level. So that's, that's always very challenging. And also the team, it's always screening. That's, I think, very important on what, what I saw on implementations that you see, okay, what are the people who are populating the project? Who are that important uh, stakeholders or the sponsors that you have, right? To, to connect to them so that you, your story that you are telling is going to be clear for, for all people that are involved. You should take all people with you. Uh, and yeah. you also are involved sometimes in change management. And that's also a challenge for the organizations, of course, to do that change management. And you sometimes already see that, okay, that could be a challenge or a risk, because that's also very important, I think, to, to get all people behind you and that you are in that, um, in that TGV, I will call it, to Paris, but that all people are in. And not that you're already in Paris and other people are waiting still on the station in, uh, in, yeah. in Breda, uh, in, in the <laughs> Netherlands. Yeah? yeah. That's always what I, how I uh, talk with that as, as a picture to, to say, okay, we should take care of that. Also at the customer, also in the organization yourself. But I think that's always uh, challenging as well to do that change management and not deliver a product to the to the to the people that are using it and they never saw it before that is also sometimes that happens but that's all the, the politics and the situation in the organization and i think of course each and every organization knows the best and should know the best how they should move forward and on which in which methodology they are using to implement these kind of new systems because it can also be the case that it is needed to have someone saying, this is what we are going to use, because otherwise no decisions are being made. So that's always yeah. a challenge also to see about the actual situation at the customer. What is, the, uh, how you should change that? 
and that you also see and that you advise and not do that with the key users in front of that. But when you are alone with people on that that are populating the project, you should give them some advice to say, okay, this uh, maybe you should do that in a different way. I think that's that should also be the role of, of us as a supplier uh, to, to a little bit manage that as well, to help them through that change management at, uh, at uh, within the implementations as well. Definitely, definitely. So, yeah, you already talked a lot about the, you know some of the challenges you've been seeing uh, over over the years. Of course, you have a lot of experience with training customers. You, you you're dealing daily with with people with different backgrounds, different stakeholders, just like you you mentioned. What what does that process, you know, of of training customers, making them using the tool better, or or simplifying some tasks? Maybe I don't know. Where where you know what does that process look like, and where do you where do you start even when 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 you think about something as complex as uh, Dynamics 365, for example? Yeah. Okay. I think the important thing eh, when you talk about training, I also do. Uh, I I also doing already for a, a longer period, uh, providing training to end users, key users, uh, partners, whatever. Mm -hmm. And the important thing there is what I always say uh, when I'm asked, okay, do you have time for some training? I'm all, I always have a few questions immediately because what is the scoping? What is the audience? Uh, do yeah. I talk to, to more technical people? So should it be an HR technical admin uh, kind of uh, training? Yeah. Or is the audience more on end user perspective? Or are that key user that already have some experience? It's very good to know what is my starting point? What is my audience? What is the experience of the audience? And I should pick up from the lowest experience. That is my starting level. So important for okay. me to give training is to decide on what's the scope. And of course, what are the topics that should be touched? Which functionality? Is it set up or is it only functionality? What is the audience? And then I'm making up my mind. And then, of course, I have some uh, some uh, trainings uh, on the shelf and then I can take it and I can tweak that training that is applicable for the audience that I have for. Yeah. And also when and, and also questions like and or when customers are saying, yeah, but we have some people that are not that experienced and are nervous to get some training or nervous to work. When I know that up front, you're going to slow down and not do a training in one day, but then maybe in several days and spread them out and not doing a training from eight to five, but doing a training from 10 to three or 10 to 3.30, for example. Yes. To not make it a big chunk because on the end of the day, everyone is sitting like this and they don't <laughs> hear and see. <laughs> they don't see anything anymore. So yeah, that is, that is also what I'm always trying to do. And also, as much as possible, do it in an environment that the audience is also looking at and seeing their own data and not working with some kind of demo data. That all also works very good because yeah. when you are working, and we have that when you are working with the demo data of Microsoft with Contoso, yeah, it helps to explain the functionality. But it's, but not, it, it's not relatable, right? No, indeed. They, yeah. I always also have that. I need to hands-on, practical, look at the system, see where are we talking about, and when they see names, when they see positions that they recognize and departments, I think it's much better to understand and it's much easier to go through that first part and explain, okay, what are the prerequisites in your system? What should you first define in the system before you can start talking about creating an employee or creating an employment? And that is something that is, I think, very important. And when I look in, in the training, I also need to uh, constantly screening if I go too slow. So constant evaluation is also important eh? yeah. to, to look back to improve for the future because you only have a few days for the training. You can also only do that once, that, that first training that should uh, yeah, be good. That should be handing over some uh, knowledge as well. And what I always also say is the training, that's step one. But it's much more important that immediately 
after that training, not wait for a few weeks before you dive into that system. So for me, it's also important that the organization is taking care of an environment with some data in it so that immediately after that training, they can already play around in the system because it's very important to have your guidance, to have your quick reference guides, to have your training and documentation, but also practice, 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 yeah. and do it all by yourself because that's the best way to learn. Practice makes perfect. Yeah. Super insightful, Gerd. This was very nice. Um, let's, looking again, uh, two, two last questions. Uh, looking again into these 11 years, you know, uh, any any stories worth telling uh, from these uh, 11 years, you know, challenges that you faced, you know, things completely unexpected. I don't know if you have something in your memories or not, but uh, yeah, yeah, that's my question for you. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a difficult one because I have maybe some stories, but I don't think I can tell them. Okay. But, uh, <laughs> um, Yeah, what can I say? Yeah, it, it's it, it's maybe too much that I have in my head and that is popping up in my mind. So that's very difficult for me now to come up with uh, such a story. But yeah, but in the beginning, when we were with with a few people in, in the organization, uh, challenging with, uh, with all the things that we had, we only had a few customers. And then what I can remember was that um, because things were unsure, also Bird and Peter, they were working on the on the product, but it was very small at the time. We were working yeah. with four or five people. And then all the things that were uh, very challenging. And then uh, my first year that I started, um, uh, both people, they, they were both gone. So Bird was on holiday, Peter was on holiday, and... <laughs> Then you didn't have any any backup uh, uh, story on that. And then I'm now also mainly involved in licensing. I'm now coming up with that story. And then customers, there was a customer, I cannot remember who it was, but the license, the license file expired. Peter was, was on holidays, Bert was there, and I could reach them, but it was very difficult. They, uh, I think uh, Peter was uh, somewhere on holiday in the mountains. And <laughs> I could not reach him. So it was very challenging because, of course, that customer, he needed to have that uh, expired license to be updated. But it was at that time much more difficult. So we needed to have contact with Microsoft to have some ID. And it was all kind of technical things. So yeah. I was all by myself traveling back and forth to, to Arnhem at that time. And, all, and I cannot remember how I, I did it, but I get some information from Bert. And, and from Peter, but I managed to do that. And that was also reflecting the situation of that time when we were yeah. only with two people and questions were popping up and I need to disturb them on their holidays. I was all by myself. I was not experienced. I was working there, I think, for only a few months. And Peter was already uh, happy. He said, yeah, I'm happy that you're there. But that was also uh, representative for the situation that we were there. Uh, starting with all our functionality and yeah, being there all by my myself. And it was, uh, they trusted me, but yeah, I, and I could contact them. But yeah, that is that is some, some story yeah. that popped up in my mind when I look back that I thought, yeah, that was, yeah, it was challenging. But on the other hand, when we look back now, I thought, yeah, that was, that was nice to, to experience and, and to see how the organization now grow and we uh, and look at, at the organization where it is now. So that's that's pretty yeah. nice to, to join and to, to, to be there in that uh, in that uh, adventure. Yeah, it's it's indeed, uh, uh, I think, in the beginning for all companies, a lot of figuring out things, basically, right? No yeah. processes, no. Yeah, you just try yeah. to go along and uh, solve things. That's yeah, uh, we are we are testing, making documentation. Uh, yeah. doing uh, a rollout etc in one in one contact and we yeah. had a contact with uh, I had contacts with the developers uh, abroad in Romania at that time where we were starting with so we had one or two developers in the background they were 
starting to to help us with uh, with um, improving that product. So yeah. we started with two three developers who were there to support us doing some technical stuff. Yeah. And, yeah. So that is um, that that yeah. is a nice retrospective of yeah. of the company. Yeah. And and looking at about it now, you know, you you're pretty upbeat guy you're a funny guy you, you, you you're still very excited about the, the company where it stands now what what is your feeling about it uh, as uh, as uh, you know we evolve we grow we have more and more people every year and what is your yeah. uh, what is your view now yeah that's it's a good question evo because it's flipping around that can be that can be different each month eh? because okay. when we are uh, a, a few people left the organization this year and also a lot of people or last year a lot of people uh, also joined. joined us yeah. and when you see and in the beginning it was much more we started with three five eight ten fifteen but at some point I was in Arnhem and in the beginning we were having dinner with a company meeting. And we had three, four people and we were going to a restaurant and we were chatting and chit-chatting and that was our company meeting. But at yeah. certain points, I looked when I was in Arnhem, I looked in the room in the space where we have their company meeting. The whole uh, uh, room was <laughs> packed with people, also yeah. people from the US and people from uh, India were joining. Yeah. And, then I, and sometimes you feel yourself a little bit lost in your company. Where should I go? What in the beginning I knew what was Peter doing, what was Bert doing, eh? what was yeah. he busy with? We, we shared that, and and now I see that a lot of things are happening, and you cannot follow in detail anymore what is happening yeah. in the organization. Yeah, and that is sometimes, yeah, that can sometimes be very difficult. That you feel yourself a little bit lost in your own company. That is, yeah, eh? and, it can and, be and overwhelming. That, yeah. yeah, it can sometimes be overwhelming indeed. That that's yeah. the right word. And then but yeah, it's also nice to be here. I would have missed it for the world. So uh, that's the other part. So but sometimes it can be yeah, strange, overwhelming. So yeah. what is happening? You think, okay. Yeah. And in the beginning I had day by day, hour by hour contact with Bird and Peter. That's not happening anymore because they are fully uh, uh, thrown in, uh, 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 yeah, in the company, and they are on on management and and uh, on management level, and they need to uh, give uh, uh, direction to the company, and they don't have time. Yeah, yeah, they don't have time to have a chit chat with you and to to inform me about the the things that are going on. Yeah. That completely changed compared to the beginning of uh, that time. So now you hear from other okay. colleagues. Yeah, I can't even imagine. I can't be in your shoes and see what you know when when we had that Christmas, uh, uh, not, not the Christmas, but uh, when we got together uh, in the in the hotel a few months a few months ago when everything yeah, yeah. was open. I can't I can't even imagine being in your shoes. Like you've been there when there were only five, and there was like yeah. thirty something people there, and yeah. you're like, I know some of these faces, but not all of them. So yeah, yeah. I can't imagine. It's, uh, yeah, yeah. That, that's that's pretty. Um, but that's that's a nice experience. They don't take that away from me anymore. So that's yeah. that's what I have in my uh, in my luggage now. And and uh, and it it has been a great journey. I, I'm repeating myself, but that is. But that's what I what what is impacting you. And it can sometimes be, yeah, sometimes it's struggling you, and it's it go it's it's uh, it's making you go back to the past and say okay. Those were nice times when we were with only a few people and we were a team. But what I see now and the commitment that I see when I was there with only five to ten people and the commitment that I see from all people that are now joining, that's not changed. So we are still, and I hear that back from all of our colleagues, we are still one big family. And that is pretty unique, I think. Uh, how the way how Bird and Peter are running their company, uh, and 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 uh, how the way how they organize some stuff, yeah, that is proving also. So that is a big, yeah, that is a plus, big, uh, big plus. plus, yeah, big plus as well. Uh, people Good. who are leaving the organization, they also say, yeah, but it's difficult because we were one for vision family, 
and it will always be our family. That's what yeah. people say when they leave the company and they have a big, huge challenge to decide to move and to go away from for vision. So that's, yeah. yeah. That's good. Okay, let's one last question and I'll let you go. It's, uh, it, we've been talking for some time now. Uh, it's, it's regarding the future. You know, you, you're seeing a lot, of, a lot of new requests coming from customers all the time. Uh, you, you've seen the evolution of the tools, the, what we are building with the web apps. Everything is moving now back to FNO, uh, the Dynamics 365 HR. Um, I, I want to ask you, like, if there are any trends that you can sense in the near future that uh, it's going to take over um, HR technologies. There's something that uh, um, piques your interest. Um, yeah, I don't think that something is going to take over. I mm -hmm. think it's plus plus plus. I think okay. all the things uh, where we bump into, I think the plus will be. And that's what we are already starting with. And we have that Microsoft platform that is out of the box available. And you buy a license, you plug it in, and it's there. You populate it, and it's there. That's the same for our web apps. And I think still we have uh, technology that is keep coming. And we should always look, and I think not everything, because in the beginning, those power apps we saw that, okay, what is going to happen with the power apps? What is going to happen with the power apps? But then after a, a while, it is changing. But I think our strength should be to look at all the technology that is available and make, make the right decisions and make the right connections and mm. not take, I think, everything what's in because we have our Microsoft Teams and everything is integrated into each other. But it can yeah. also take care that you are completely lost in your own organization as well, eh? right? With, yeah. with using all the technologies and 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 use that all in full. I think it's good to um, yeah to take the right technology and put that in if that is needed for the complete uh, solution that we are working on. I think. Yeah, I think that was. I think otherwise yeah. you go back to 10 years ago when uh, a customer had 80 different applications. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then indeed the, the history is is indeed repeating itself. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. Because when you have all these kind of topics and you say, yeah, we must not, we cannot allow us to, to skip that or something else. I think we yeah. should do that and not pickpocketing all the tools that are there that are being um, uh, made important and launched. And this is uh, uh, this is the, the tooling that we need to use for. But I think, and that's also what always what we did in the company, trying to change and transform into and following the policy and following the, the products that Microsoft were providing. And that's already, that's also a challenge already. And then, when they give all and bring bring up all kind of technologies, I think that should be the art of pickpocketing the right technology and put that all together and see if it's feasible for us to put that in our platform and to offer that. And also important is, of course, listen to what our customers have to say. Yes. So that, uh, and that's all always what we did what is happening in the world, in the HR world, because that's also important. Uh, yeah. When you use technology that is completely out of line with, uh, with our HR world, within the HR world, yeah, I don't think we should use that because it's there and we should be following all the, tech, the technologies. Yeah, it's not using technology for the sake of technology, but actually it should have some meaning to the customer, you know. Should, yeah, it should it's, add value to it. And, and yeah. that's always what you should focus on, I think, to, to not drown in all the, the, because then you are got, getting lost in your own application, uh, maybe, or in your own, not in your own application, but in your own world and your own platform that you are building. Yeah, ab absolutely. Well, Kurt, this this is it. Um, that's all I had to to question you. Maybe you know you can uh, think about some of those stories and uh, come back another time to uh, to tell us uh, some funny stories about for vision. I'm sure people listening out there would like to know some. Yeah. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, 
I enjoyed it, but it was sometimes, yeah, it was uh, hard to see, okay, what could I tell? And then, and I had some introduction, but it was very nice to do. And then having that platform in a way to to look back a little bit also and to take some time uh, for looking at it uh, in another way and share it with you all. Good, good. I really, I really enjoyed it. I think uh, people listening will get a great, uh, a great learning about for vision on this one. Um, so I really appreciate your time once again for people listening. Uh, we'll see you next week on another episode. Thank you. Okay.